Hello, welcome to episode 2 of our wedding series. Today we talk about getting good images on your wedding day. You and I, we need to talk. That the animal, Getting good images on your wedding day. This is the second episode for the series and getting good images is as important as the first episode choosing the right photographer so if you've not watched the first episode please go back and watch it the link or the video will be right here so if you haven't watched it please go and watch it and come back to this video i mean you can watch all separately you can watch this and go and watch that but make sure you watch that one to understand where we came from all right so this week we talk about how to get good images for your wedding and as always this video is not for just clients or prospective clients or people who are looking for photographers or people who are getting married it's for a wide group of people even photographers and upcoming photographers can learn a lot from this video because they are things that I have used over the years and even other photographers have used and passed it on along you know so that we can all benefit from so I have information here that's going to benefit clients and is going to benefit uh, potential photographers or future photographers equally. So point one, very important, make sure you give the photographer a heads up of important things, alright? As professional photographers, we know what to take care of naturally or with practice, we know what to take care of, we know what's important. But sometimes there are certain things as humans are more important to some particular people and are not important to other people so if you have something that's so important to you on your wedding day maybe your grandma is coming and you've not seen her for six years you know she's coming to your wedding this is the first time she's traveled this far and you want pictures of her you know you need to communicate this to the photographer if you can have a short list of some of the very important things I mean, you, you are not going to tell the photographer to take a picture of your shoes or the gown or this. There are certain things that are very clear, but there are some other things that you need to put emphasis on if they are so important to you, so the photographer doesn't miss. You know, I've shot a couple of weddings that you, you, you see somebody at the back end and you take a picture of the person, you know, normally you have to run the room and cover everybody present so yes we have that insurance but then the groom or the bride will come back and say do you have more of this particular picture maybe a friend from school that they, they they were best friends before okay how would the photographer know that you need more pictures of your best friend who is sitting in the 14th row you understand so these things are so important and we don't want to be missing them so you also have to make it a point to notify your photographer so they take extra care of those people for you they take more pictures for them for you all right so have these things on a list and give it to your photographer or have somebody to guide the photographer okay oh this is the groom's best friend this is this if you've not had that conversation already with your photographer just have somebody there to guide the photographer in group pictures right just let the photographer know oh my stepmom and my mom are not really cool so that the photographer doesn't go and say moms come together let's take a group hug picture and then your stepmom and your mom are not in good terms you know these things are very petty things but they are very huge things too that the photographer won't know so a heads up on these few things will help a long way and both of you will be very happy so make note of some important things and let the photographer know point two pre-wedding shoot or engagement shoot make sure you have time to do this before the main wedding all right not the engagement itself but a pre-wedding shoot or pre-engagement shoot or an engagement shoot that's how some people call it okay make time if it's just 30 minutes with your photographer to go to a location and take test shots of you know yourselves the couple together individually and all that this gives the photographer 
an idea of how you 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 work in front of camera okay so he knows what to do for you and how to guide you because on the main day if he discovers that you are you are not um, a photo friendly person it's going to be too much work for him but if he discovers that before the wedding then he has ideas on how to ease you into the main wedding you understand so make sure you just have a test shoot or a pre-wedding shoot all our packages come with these uh, pre-wedding shoots so that we get familiar with our clients before the wedding day so that on the wedding day I mean he, the person they've seen us already they've seen how we work we also know how they take their pictures most at times guys are more uncomfortable taking pictures and doing the poses and all these things women are naturals already so it's good for all of us to do these things so that we can ease the men into posing with their wives and all these things on the main day they've done it before so now they can ease into it you understand practice brings perfection practice brings perfection so pre shoot you should take it as a, a, a stepping stone to practice for your wedding so that on the wedding day you are already comfortable and you're taking good pictures you don't want to be testing on your wedding day and taking half half pictures you know you want to be taking solid pictures on your wedding day with nice smiles and nice poses and all those things so make sure you have a pre-wedding session or an engagement session very important third point think about light now photography is all about lighting without light there's no photo all right without light there's no video so think about light that's a very very important thing so let me break it down to all the sections of a wedding day from dress up church to reception okay so dress up now if you are dressing up at say a, a, a hotel okay please make sure you have access to a very big window when we talk about light you know most times people are like oh there's light in the room there's light we are not we are not talking about bulb or the normal light we need a window basically the kind of light that comes from a window do you understand so the bigger the window the more we enjoy the the, the picture taking okay so try and get hotel rooms or if it's your house you are dressing from Make sure if your room is not um, doesn't have a window, make sure you go to a room that has window. You dress up at a room with a big window, a big enough window. If you are dressing up at a hotel, make sure there's a very big window. Dress up at a place where you can see the sunrise. That's good light for good pictures. Please take note of that. Also, if you are dressing up with your bridesmaids, if you are dressing up with your bridesmaids, please make sure they don't mess up the place for you. Okay? Please make sure. If you can afford it, try and get a separate room, dress up with maybe just your maid of honor or just your mom, anybody you want. Just a few people, two, three people in your room and that's it. Let the rest dress up somewhere. They will also get pictures. Alright? But just for your dress up, let it be as clean and as neat as possible most dress up rooms are clumsy so if you see good pictures you have to just appreciate the photographer's skills because they've tried it is very very clumsy so make sure you make it easy for your photographer and you make it easy for him to get good pictures of your dress up now two the church service now going to a church you need to inform the photographer if there are any limitations in those churches especially for catholic churches they don't allow you to pass a certain limit towards the pulpit you understand so make sure you communicate those things to your photographer at this point you are not allowed to do this at this point you are not allowed to do that i've been to churches where when they are blessing the marriage or they are exchanging vows you are not allowed to move or even take pictures okay so if i didn't have assistants who were at different angles i couldn't have captured those memories so make sure you communicate all these things 
to the bride, or I mean to the photographer, so that they come prepared. At least they can bring extra people or they know where to stand at what point, so that when they say no movement, they know this is what they have to do, this is where they have to be at. Some churches don't allow flashes. They don't allow you to be flashing lights. And that's also very, very important to tell the photographer beforehand so that they know what to do, what kind of lens to get, what kind of camera to get, and all that kind of things. All right? Now, if you move also to maybe say guests, when guests come to weddings, especially in Ghana or in Africa, I'm sure anywhere in Africa, they do the same thing. When they are exchanging vows, that's where everybody wants to show their iPads and their iPhones and their flashes and all those things. It doesn't help. So if you could talk to your guests before the day, that you don't want any pictures from them. You have paid people to take pictures for you. So they should sit down and enjoy the moment. If you could do that, it will go a long way. And you, you could also ask the priest to announce it in church that nobody should get up whilst the ceremony is going on or whilst they are exchanging vows. Only official photographers are allowed. These kind of announcements also pave way for great pictures because then there will be no struggling with the photographer. Can you imagine that people actually struggle with the main photographer to take pictures of the bride and groom like it doesn't make sense but it happens you understand all right so let's move on to the reception reception make sure there's enough light assuming you are going into the evening the reception is going into the evening or even if it's not in the evening and it's in it's indoor all right or an, an auditorium make sure there is lighting and when i talk about light not the light in the room not the switches not those ones because they don't make much difference make sure you book lighting people who come and set up extra lights extra lights so that it will make a whole lot of difference for an auditorium when we come to weddings this is all we bring as photographers this is all we bring flash video guys bring continuous light just this and that's all they put on their camera just a few people would have other things but basically these things can't light up the whole auditorium for you okay so if you see some picture and it is lit well and the groom and the bride are dancing in an auditorium and all that it is not because the photographer lit the whole place it's not possible the bride and the groom or the event coordinator or the planners need to take care of these lighting issues they need to bring lighting people to come and light up the place that's very very important now also on lighting people when we go for events people also listen and bring lighting guys but then they leave the lighting guys to do what they want and that's where the problem is because bringing the lighting guy alone is not the answer letting them know what to do especially coordinating with us the photographers and the video guys is very important because I've, I've had a situation where I was shooting a wedding and the bride and groom were now coming into the reception. They were making the entrance into the reception. And that was where the lighting guy decided to take off the light because he was doing his own effects. But then I missed my shot because I was ready with his light and everything to shoot those things. And then he decides to go off and come on at that moment understand so if something important happens at that point I have missed it so these are things you need to communicate entrance you don't put off light it's not necessary you can put it off when they are not in but when they are in make sure it's on the the walk that's not where you you change colors from red to blue to green to all these things you just need constant daylight this white light is called daylight just keep it constant for us and that's all we need to take care of the event father and daughter dance that's not where i mean we've seen events where that is exactly the time lighting guys want to show their their colors they want to show all their colors and it makes the the video so horrible because their their, their gowns and everything will change to those colors do you understand if you're wearing a white and there's red light in the room 
your, your gown will reflect this light. Your face will turn red or blue or those colors. And it makes these things very difficult to work with. So just keep it white, daylight, and then leave the rest to the photographer and the video guy to handle. So if you can have this understanding before your wedding day, you are, you are in for a good deal. But if you mistakenly forget these things, you could be doomed. Seriously, you could be doomed. So please take care of lighting. Very important. Four, book a makeup artist. This is as important as lighting because it's your special day and you need to look your best. You need to look your best. I don't think there's any woman who would have a wedding without a makeup unless you are a purist you know so that one cool but it makes a whole lot of difference and i'll have a, a, a different episode i mean a whole episode for just the makeup because it's a big thing and i want to tackle it specially all right but just make sure there is makeup on your big day basically five leave enough time this is this is another very very important point leave enough time for pictures now the point we are discussing here the bigger point is getting good images on your wedding day now if you give a photographer two minutes or if you don't even give him time at all for just pictures after you dress up how do you expect him to make good images for you because most times brides waste a lot of time on makeup and hair and those things you know and they don't need just even 20 minutes for pictures because all that time you wasted on hair and makeup for what to look good to look good for what to get good pictures and then for your husband to see now if you spend all the time on makeup and hair and you don't have time i mean the best time to get good images is when you are done with the makeup in the morning after dress up that's the perfect time that's the best you look the whole day so if you could spare just 15 minutes or 20 minutes the longer the better because then we, we explore more we go to more locations we go to more things you, you understand more ideas come up so the longer the better and if you give a photographer two minutes i'm going to church i'm late i'm late i need to go and what do you want the photographer to do with that you understand most times the brides even try but then maybe their parents are in a hurry hey photo, you have to move it's time it's time the church those time what do you want the photographer to do so please apportion your time appropriately and 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 live by it if you ask me to come to a location at 8 a.m i expect you to be done by 10 if church service is 11 or 12, we leave some time for transportation. You understand? So at least if I have 30 minutes to take pictures of you and your bridesmaids, that's where the magic happens. That's where some of the best images I've made happened. So make sure you give your photographer some time to create that magic you want. Point six, this may sound a bit funny or trivial, but feed your photographers or feed your video guys if you can feed them in the morning but most importantly when at the reception just make sure they are fed most times it's very difficult to be struggling for food or to be in a queue to get food and all that whilst you are supposed to be taking pictures or to be videoing the event you understand so if you could just make that provision for your photographer and for your video people they will be so happy with you and obviously they would put more into the <laughs> the work it's, it's just natural a hungry man is an angry man so if they are angry and they are hungry they won't work too well so please make sure they are fed during the reception time last but not least learn to pose it goes to everybody both the male and the female the bride and the groom it goes for all of you posing is not just for the females you need to know how to pose with your bride and you need 
to know how to pose with your husband all these things come with practice so during your wedding arrangements whilst you are going for counseling and all these things also be practicing how to pose you it might come in very handy on the day of your wedding because you are already comfortable with each other and you like playing around already posing so it will come in very handy learn in front of the mirror see how you look at different angles if you turn this way are you better or this way you know all these things come in very handy on the day of your wedding so learn how to pose so that's it for this episode getting good images on your wedding day all these things we've mentioned are very important in their own way and if you could take care of all these things it will help you drastically on your big day you understand I mean the difference between a good photographer and an awesome one are these things if they know these things and they pay attention to these petty petty details it makes a whole lot of difference but some of these things have to come from you you have to help us to help you because I'm a good photographer I can shine in all these events I can shine in all the circumstances but what if you don't get the best photographer these things will make a difference on your day so make sure you help your photographer to help you now there's another one thing I'd like to discuss which is your social media do's and don'ts make sure your friends don't post and tag these images to you before the official pictures come out because then they backfire the whole job we've done you understand so if you could change your settings on Facebook or all your social media things just to make sure you accept any tag before it comes to your feed it will help you greatly to control these things don't let anybody flood your timeline with any picture they want so that you could control what is seen and what is not seen they could share it on their own walls that's their problem but control your wall and your tags that's also a very very important point you need to get to know. go to your Facebook settings and watch for those things you have to confirm tags before they come to your timeline very easy to do so we'll continue next week on another episode to getting a perfect wedding video or picture